So um, basically, he's just introduced the title, so I don't have to do that. Um, a little bit about me. Um, yeah, I'm a, I feel like every other presenter is sort of from a company. Uh, I've just finished my computer security degree, so uh, yeah, right? Yeah, student debt is fun. Um, so in my spare time, I reverse engineer malware and firmware and software, but I thought I'd do something a little bit exotic for a conference. I thought I'd do something a little bit different that I don't normally do. I've also done some things with bug bounties. Basically, I just like complex problems, um, unless it's maths, and then I'm absolutely not there. No way. Um, so I feel like a lot of people think open source intelligence isn't cool. A lot of people just see it as something that a nation state does or something that people just do to analyze data that's public. And fair enough, that is it. But you can get some really interesting analysis from public data, and actually some really interesting ideas and results from it. So. I think it's really good to sort of just look into it a little bit more. Um, just quickly, um, who would do open source intelligence? Well, nation states, obviously. Financial firms, obviously, they want to look at current affairs and what people believe in and what they're doing. Also, protests and journalists on the other side also want to make sure that they evade government OSINT tools and also want to make sure that their sources are safe from being tracked in somewhat. And also, businesses that care about the insider threat, basically. So, could be anyone. Um, so when I looked at open source intelligence, a lot of people looked at user-generated content and semantic analysis. That was really interesting. But one of the major things for me was looking at connections, because basically no one really looks into it. And also, I mean, people lie on the internet. Um, every, you know, it's all about fake news and things like that. And so I thought it'd be better to look at something that was more solid about interactions and what people actually do. And also, social media nowadays are becoming more and more um, I'm happy about mass data surveillance, and I know there's ethical questions there, but um, you know, technically, I'm just looking at the technical subject, but um, yeah, social media is becoming less and less happy about how much data people are taking from their services. So my aim was to make a tool, basically, or, or research more about how we could gather information in some manner without an API key, because Recon NG already gathers information, so I don't need to do that. I want to do it without being authenticated whatsoever um, and just grab it from, via an internet connection. Um, I wanted to visualize networks to understand social networks better because you can get so much information by understanding a graph, basically. Um, and also, I use nothing crazy. I just use Python Bash and JavaScript to basically have a look and see what's going on. Um, for now, I've just focused on Twitter and Instagram because they're the easiest. Facebook's a little bit closed off, so it's a little bit harder. Um, Privacy differs. So I did a little bit more research. Um, so with Twitter, um, they have a mobile endpoint and a desktop endpoint. And they actually differ on how much information they give to you. So in this, I know it looks a little bit weird, and I've sensed it quite a lot. Um, but basically, that is um, me showing a request of me clicking on followers on the m.twitter.com domain. And essentially, it's giving you information using their API without you having an API key or an authentication whatsoever. You're just using your IP. So it's interesting. Um, the headers that are sent that are used for authentication aren't really that hard to replicate. And I've sort of highlighted them there. I mean, that isn't really useful to you, but there you go. Um, and essentially, um, every request where you ask for followers, you'll get 20 followers. That's how much you get from the request. Um, and you get a limit within the API. This is the same if you register an application. 15 requests in 15 minutes. So that's every minute, essentially. Um, and I just calculated that you could get 10.5 million follower entries without any registration, obviously, with, without the API key, you could do this with one IP. You could do it with multiple IPs, and that would be really interesting. Um, but that was something that I looked at and saw that on a desktop, if you try and look at what the person's followers is, essentially it just says you need to sign up. So it's interesting to see the difference, because if you do a little bit more reconnaissance and understanding what sort of uh, platform they're on or different versions of social media, they can actually output information that is, is sort of weak to their privacy design. And so what I did with social media is I searched for interactions like retweets, likes, reblogs, whatever it is. Um, and I, I got that because a lot of that is mostly public. And it's able to grab it, as well as user-generated content. But I was looking at connections. And so um, you know, I was looking at that sort of interaction. And what I did is I went from if someone interacted with a target that I was looking at, 
And then I went into their profile and then recursively looked at interactions in other people's profiles, essentially. And I used a certain threshold um, to find what I call connection loops, which is essentially from a target trying to see the connections go all the way around to the original target. So that's, that's what it did. Now, on Instagram, that's a map of 10,000 connections, and one of the targets is right in the middle. Now, the nodes sort of make it a little bit hard to see, um, but essentially, it's quite a weird-looking graph. If I remove the nodes and add what I've done to basically show people being connected, so the red lines are essentially um, going back to other people, more than three connections where they connect to each other. Um, and although that doesn't say they're friends or anything, it means that they're associated in some way, and there's a lot of different applications that you can see. And also, it's interesting to see that some of these actually are go right back to the middle from the edge. So we see at the bottom left, there's quite a lot at the bottom of that network, although there's only 10,000 connections. But at the top right, there's virtually nothing going on there. So it's quite interesting to have a look at that and sort of analyze that in some manner. Um, if you zoom in, I know it's relatively weird to see. Um, I've not exactly done a great job to, to provide. But essentially, if you zoom in, you can see smaller circles within others. And I did a little bit of research outside of information security where essentially someone said that humans can only maintain around 150 human relationships. And, um, you know, not close friends. You know, you probably have like three friends or one friend or something like that. But actually being able to maintain a relationship, a working relationship, is around 150. So what I was thinking was interesting is, are you able to actually um, d derive these sort of connections from people or, or relationships from social media, um, from interactions without being authenticated? And are we able to predict future connections towards people by their actual uh, interactions and who they, who they like? Um, so what I found, also I did a little bit of uh, recent analysis where um, I took an account that was abusing the hashtag Manchester attack and essentially looked at what these people were doing and the network they were done in social media. So um, I wanted to see that, well eventually I found out that circles can eventually, or connection loops can eventually identify active users. And what I found is I researched the Pareto principle which shows the vital few. So the 20% do the most work where they sort of are very active and bring in information and there's 80% that just listen or just look at it or retweet it or whatever. And it was quite, I, I saw that from the actual connections that I got. And I also saw that as little as three connections, so you know, someone interacts with someone else, someone interacts with someone else, um, that you get such a view as anti-Islam or something that is quite extremist in nowadays content. Um, and what I find also is that you can also look at information flow, how actually people, when they have an interaction, how they can actually receive the information. So a retweet and then a like or something like that. You can understand how they actually got to that original information. Um, and also, sometimes social media is a network of silos. So there's the, thil um, the theory of a filter bubble where people just look at things that they want to see, essentially. And um, that, that came across as quite obvious as well through what I saw on my research as well. And what I did is I crawled every day. So I, I, got, uh, I put it all into a database, essentially, and I crawled and then left it. So if I kept doing that every day, you could actually compare the results as well and look at the differences and see what sort of different ways people flowed information. Um, so who cares about that? Well, I've, I've talked about a few things about the applications and what I'm doing there, but there's a few things that I also want to point out that could be interesting. We can use multiple networks, so what I've crawled, to map a private account's contacts. So this is on Instagram only. So someone can set their account as private, but you can also, if they interact with someone who's got a public profile, and you can map that public person's profile, then essentially you can have a look at trying to identify them as a person, what they like, from other people's public profiles and what their interactions are. Uh, we can understand information flow better. I've talked about that. I've censored some of these because uh, some of these are public and some of them aren't. Um, but essentially, um, likes on Twitter, uh, they've implemented that now on Twitter. So how that information re gets received to someone, um, Twitter has an algorithm which essentially shows you at certain points. I want to know, essentially from the research I do, how often that is. Uh, retrieve removed users' contacts, which is essentially the same, except from you, you've got um, you know, other people's networks, and essentially you're associated with them. You get removed, you look at that network that's still there. Um, fake news, malware, spam intel, understanding the victims and what they're doing there, 
And finally, um, I talked about intelligent open source intelligence, which isn't the best title, um, but basically, I'm saying here, foundation for user-generated content semantic analysis. That's an awful sentence. Um, but basically, what I'm saying is concentrating on, uh, once you've got a connection loop, or uh, a circle, as I say, um, concentrating on the people that are in there. So if we look at a picture there, oh, no, it's all the way back, isn't it? Uh, so these are in red. These are part of the connection loop. Um, concentrating and looking at their user-generated content instead of blindly just looking at uh, everyone's content, which could be you know, not very good or they're lying in, of some sort. So um, thanks for listening to me talk very fast. I apologize. Uh, I, 15 minutes didn't seem a lot. Uh, if you've got any questions, that's fine, all good. Uh, if you haven't, I'll just walk off the stage and we'll, we'll end it here.